Welcome to part 3 of this multiplayer tutorial series. In this one, we'll be implementing a tick system and then using that to smooth out player movement. Before we jump in though, the project has changed quite a bit since the last video. I've added various mechanics off camera including scene management, player health, dying and respawning, three different guns that shoot different bullets, and hit markers. I've also added a proper map and some models to make the project look nicer. All of it works in multiplayer, and there's a branch in the GitHub repository containing the two projects in the same state as I have them here at the start. You can obviously download the whole thing and follow along that way, but almost none of the code we'll be writing in this video actually relies on anything I added since the last one. I'll also leave a link in the description to the difference between the project at the end of the last video and now, so you can see exactly what changed, and you could probably also use that to manually make the additions to your existing project if you like. I decided not to make tutorials about each of these mechanics as they're all found in single player games and making them work in multiplayer really just requires sending some data back and forth. Interpolation on the other hand isn't something you really deal with in a single player project so I figured it'd be more valuable to cover that in a video. If you were hoping for step by step guides for things like shooting you may find some of the videos in the old tutorial series helpful. The production quality is worse and the code is a bit different but much of the logic flow is similar. Anyways, let's get started. First things first, open up the server project, go to edit, project settings, time, and set your fixed time step. I'm going to set it to 0.025, which will basically make our fixed update method run 40 times per second. You can really choose whatever tick rate you want, and you can calculate your fixed time step by dividing 1 by your chosen tick rate. For example, if you want your server to run at 60 ticks per second, you divide 1 by 60 to calculate the necessary fixed time step. Whatever fixed time step you end up using, make sure it's set to the same value in both the client and server projects. We're going to set up our tick logic next, so open up the server's network manager and add a new property for the current tick. In fixed update, increment the current tick. The next step is to synchronize the ticks between the server and client, so let's add an ID for sync messages to our enum. In fixed update, send the sync message whenever current tick is evenly divisible by 200. I'm using 200 because with my tick rate of 40, 200 is 5 seconds worth of ticks, meaning the sync message will be sent every 5 seconds. At the bottom, create the method to send our sync message. We're going to send this message unreliably because it's not really a big deal if it gets lost occasionally. Add the current tick to the message and then send it to all players. Then copy the server to client ID enum and paste it to the client's network manager. Add a property to store the tick being sent over from the server. Create another property to store the interpolation tick, which will very slightly lag behind the server tick, and set its value from within the server tick setter. We need one final property to store the interval between position updates in ticks. In the setter, set the interpolation tick's value. Finally, add a field for the tick divergence tolerance. In the start method, set the server tick to 2 so that the interpolation tick is set without being assigned a negative number. In fixed update, increment server tick by 1. This will keep the client's idea of which tick the server is on relatively accurate, despite the fact that we're only synchronizing the value every 5 seconds. At the bottom, add a set tick method. Inside, we're going to calculate the difference between the locally stored tick and the one we just received from the server. Taking the absolute value of that difference allows us to easily check if we're exceeding the tick divergence tolerance in either direction. If we are, we're just going to overwrite the locally stored tick. While doing it this way is very straightforward, it may cause occasional jittering, which will be more noticeable the bigger the correction is. A better approach would probably be to temporarily speed up or slow down the client's tick rate until it has realigned itself with where it should be, but that's obviously more complicated. I'm also just going to add a debug message here to tell us when a correction happens and how big it is. Finally, create a message handler for the sync message, inside which we're simply going to call the setTick method. If you run the server and connect to it now, you should see the debug message telling us that the tick was overwritten. Now that our tick system is set up, we can start implementing interpolation properly. Back in the server code, open up the player movement class. Add a private field to store whether we've recently teleported. Set this to true in the teleport method, which you'll only have if you added the changes from GitHub to your project. In the send movement method, add the current tick to the movement message right after the player's ID, followed by the did teleport bool. This will allow the client to determine which position update belongs with which tick, so if messages get lost or arrive out of order, that won't really cause any problems. 
The reason we include whether this position update was a teleport is so that clients don't smooth out those movements. Without that information, teleporting short distances will look like you're actually sliding to the new position, even if it happens quickly. After sending the message, set the did teleport bool back to false. We can also decrease the rate at which we're sending position updates. 40 updates per second is a lot and not really necessary. I set the ticks between position updates to two earlier, which means my client is expecting a position update every second tick, so I'm going to return out of the send movement method every second tick. In the client's Unity project, create two new scripts called interpolator and transform update. Open the transform update class and add properties for the tick, whether or not it was a teleport, and for the position. In the constructor, just assign all three properties. Also, remove the inheritance from mono behavior so that we don't get warnings when trying to use the constructor to create new instances of this class. In the interpolator class, add fields for the elapsed time, the time to reach the target position, and the movement threshold. We'll also need a list of transform updates, a float for the squared movement threshold, and three transform update references. In start, assign the square movement threshold and the to, from, and previous transform update references. In the update method, add a for loop to loop through our list. Inside, we'll check if the server tick is greater or equal to the tick of the transform update we're currently looking at. If it is, that means it's time to use this transform update. If this update is a teleport, we're just going to set to, from, and previous to the same value and immediately update the object's position. If it's not a teleport, we'll set previous to to, to to the transform update from the list, and from to the object's current position. We'll also remove the transform update from the list, and because we've just removed an element from the list while looping through it, we need to decrease i by 1 to avoid potential errors. Then reset time elapsed and set the time to reach target to the difference in ticks between the to and from transform updates multiplied by the fixed time step. Unity will complain here that because we're in an update method, we should be using time.delta time instead, but that's not the case. We're not using this to account for variations in frame timing, but rather to convert tick values to actual time. Outside the for loop, increment time elapsed by time.delta time. Next, create a method to interpolate the position. Inside, subtract the target position from the position of the previous transform update and compare its square magnitude to our square movement threshold. If it's smaller, we're going to assume that the object isn't supposed to be moving, however, it may not have reached the target position yet. We'll use vector3.lerp to ensure that the object makes it all the way to its intended position. If the difference between the previous and target transform updates exceeds the threshold, that means the object is supposed to be moving. To prevent the object from suddenly stopping if a position update is delayed or lost, we'll use the vector3.lerp unclamped method. This works the same as the regular lerp, but if the lerp amount's value is greater than 1, it will continue to move the object even past its target position. This is called extrapolation. We're using two known points along the object's trajectory to calculate its future position in order to hide the fact that we're missing some data. In situations where the object hasn't changed direction, this will work pretty much flawlessly, but if it has changed direction, our extrapolation will be somewhat inaccurate. When there's missing data, we're basically trading some accuracy in exchange for keeping movement smooth. Now we can call interpolate position from the end of the update method. Finally, we need a way to actually add position updates to our list, so create a new update method. Inside, check if the update's tick is older than the interpolation tick, in which case this update is outdated and of no use to us. However, if the update happens to be a teleport, we don't want to throw that out, so we'll let it through. Next, loop through the transform updates list. Inside the loop, we'll insert the new update if it's older than the transform update we're currently looking at, which will result in this list being ordered with the oldest transform update first. If the list is empty or the new update isn't older than any updates that are already in the list, we'll just add it to the end. Over in the player class, add a reference for the interpolator. Then in the move method, replace the position assignment with an interpolator.newUpdate call. Last but not least, go to the player movement message handler and pass the message's tick and is teleport values to the move method. Back in Unity, open the local player prefab, attach the interpolator, and assign it to the player scripts field. Do the same for the player prefab. And with that, your player movement should look much smoother than it did before. Obviously, we've only written interpolation code for positions, but you can interpolate rotations too using much of the same logic. 
We won't be doing that in this video though. Another thing to note is that as it is now, there will be problems whenever the tick reaches the U short max value, which will happen roughly every 27 minutes at a tick rate of 40. This is because we haven't accounted for ticks wrapping back around to zero, and we're using less than or greater than checks in several places to determine if a tick is older or newer than another. Overall, this is still quite a simple implementation of interpolation, and while it has worked pretty well in my tests so far, it's very possible that there are edge cases I haven't accounted for, so if you run into any issues or think improvements can be made, please let me know. Anyways, if you found this helpful, make sure you smash the like button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.